So today we've come down to the blast furnaces here in Port Albert, but today not to talk about the blast furnaces themselves, but to talk about a critical part of the infrastructure which allows those blast furnaces to work, and that is the stoves. Now, joined by Andrew McGregor, who is project manager on the stoves improvement program to improve the efficiency of the stoves, as well as, as well here, will reduce our energy usage, reduce our coke usage, and uh, reduce the carbon footprint uh, of the Port Albert site and the supply chain. Andrew, listen, thanks very much for joining us today and thanks for taking us around the stoves this morning. Firstly, firstly, tell tell us a bit about what is a stove and what does it do as part of the process? So stove is a great big heat exchanger and it's a way of exchanging heat from a burner, so gas, we burn gas which is indigenous to the site. We use that to generate heat which heats up refractory bricks. Those bricks store that heat. That heat's then imparted to the cold blast which is injected into the blast furnace. So we take cold blast at about 100 degrees uh, compressed air from the atmosphere around us which is then put through these heated bricks and injected into the blast furnace is the hot blast that's where the, the term blast furnace comes from this is the blast that goes into the furnace and helps the reaction within the process to reduce the iron ore into liquid iron and liquid slag yeah because it's probably a common misconception that the blast furnace is kind of standalone and there's some sort of heating process or burning process in there but actually the energy for the blast furnace comes through these stoves that's why a blast furnace is so efficient you've got this hot blast going into the furnace at the very base and it works its way all the way through the furnace reacting with the material for six or seven hours and that's reducing the ore into the iron eventually but that all comes from the hot blast coming from the stoves so that heat that goes in in the hot blast is integral to the blast furnace and the more efficient that we can heat that air and goes into the blast furnace the less fuel the actual blast furnace needs so the less chemical reaction is required or the energy for that chemical reaction because you're putting that energy in in the heat from the stoves. Yeah, and it's great to hear that we're recycling uh, some of our processed gases uh, in terms of um, igniting the burner or, or, or burning the recycled gases uh, in the stoves. But those stoves, we've got seven of them, I think, uh, they weren't running as efficiently as we needed them to be. So the heat going into the furnace wasn't as high as it needed to be. Is that right? That's correct. This, this programme is focused on three stoves, two on Blast Furnace 4 and one on Blast Furnace 5. It's about improving the overall efficiency of the stoves. So we've done work around the burners to improve the efficiency of the burner. So we're burning that gas and using it much more efficiently. So we're imparting more of that gas value, the heat from that gas, into the cold blast to make it hot blast. And then exchanging the heat more efficiently between the hot and cold bar so we're actually getting more heat into it and into the furnace rather than losses through the process we've just been up close uh, to these stoves and they are absolutely massive aren't they i mean i don't know how tall they're about 50 or 60 meters approximately 50 meters high uh, by about 10 meters diameter uh, they they're holding thousands and thousands of refractory bricks each brick may only be sort of 16 17 pound of brick but you multiply it up by the numbers we're talking about yeah. and then the labor each brick has to be hand placed into the stove there's no big conveyor belt to put them in there they've had to be taken out by hand and put in by hand so it's yeah. been a phenomenal effort by a lot of people <laughs> and uh, the idea is you'll get that temperature up uh, because the stoves will be more efficient. And what are the benefits then in terms of cost? Because the payback on this scheme is actually pretty quick, isn't it? Yeah, so the benefit is increasing the hot blast temperature by having a more efficient stove. So every 100 degrees that we can increase the hot blast temperature allows us to take coke, the main reactant, out of the blast furnace. And we're looking at taking out about 16,000 tonnes of coke annually from the blast furnace process, and that equates to approximately 50,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent per stove what we do so three stoves 150,000 tons of co2 equivalent reduction that's not being created it's not being avoided we're not making it we're not releasing it yeah. it's a huge improvement yeah and we've just been inside the a part of stove 11 yeah uh, number 10 has been completed already and number 13 is about to come on and that that will see the completion of this phase of the project um, what happens next Andrew so we're looking at whether we get the same benefit from looking at stove 14 uh, there we believe that there's again a further benefit from doing stove 14 so the program may be extended into a, a fourth stove uh, and we're looking as well at the others to see if there's any other efficiencies that we can drive again to reduce our carbon use and our carbon emissions 
Hey, listen, it's a fantastic project, and, and I've driven past these blast furnaces more times than I care to imagine, and, and very rarely have I noticed or taken much attention to the stoves that sit next door to them, much less realise how important they are to the efficient running of the blast furnace, how much energy they can save by having them running efficiently, and how much CO2 this site will be reducing its carbon footprint by by this uh, investment this year. Andrew, it's a fantastic story. Thanks very much for bringing us around and taking us inside the stoves. And uh, maybe we'll come back down when we get onto stove 14. That'd be fab. Thank you very much.